Okay, so starting off exactly from where we were previously, I'm just going to hide the fence as we won't need that again for a little while now. And if we go back to our post section, so find the post in our collection here, uh, we have obviously the main wooden post and beam visible from unwrapping previously. So we're going to want to hide this and bring back everything in relation to the lamp. So what I'm going to do here to keep this as simple as possible, I'm actually going to unwrap this before we join everything uh, and that will carry across to the final texture unwrap then or UV unwrap. So to start, we can do the rings. This is going to be very, very simple. We'll go into edit mode. Uh, we can, obviously we're not going to want this. Uh, that would work, but uh, we're getting some stretching and it's taking up too much space. So if we see what we get with just a standard unwrap, that is uh, the standard unwrap. If we do a smart UV project, because this is such a simple object, sometimes you might get away with that, uh, but it's splitting things off a little bit too much which is what I thought might happen. So what we're gonna do is go into edge mode over here. And sometimes it's always worth checking with small, simple objects like this. Uh, but in this case, it's still gonna be a little bit better to spend some time to do a proper unwrap. So we'll Alt Shift Select to get the ring inside because again, remember, we're always trying to hide the seams where possible. So we'll mark that seam, see what's happening. Uh, and if you've had a break between obviously this video and the last one, I still have my live unwrap selected under the UV option here. And if you press U in the right hand window, I also have my live unwrap done here. And of course the UV sync selection. So whatever I select in this window will be selected in this window. So that unwrap is looking a little bit better, if not still a bit stretched. So another place that we can hide a seam and ease this up is gonna be this edge loop down here. So again, Alt Shift Select to get those. Control E, Mark Seam. And that's much better. It's taking up a lot less space, a little bit of stretching in the middle. You could easily fix that by doing a seam up here as well. Um, but then we've got two extra sections. The stretching's not that much better. And again, before we do all of this, I'm actually just going to double check the scale. So control A, all transforms, make sure that they are all uniform and go back into this one. The other way would be to add a seam around the outside, but then that does ease, ease the stretching a lot, but we're taking up more UV space. We're getting more information from the unwraps um, in fact, if I clear that seam, and again, this is something that we actually have the luxury of not worrying about because we're putting this onto our color grid, then we can get away with this, which is great, again, for a low poly style that we're going for. If you were texturing on this, if you were hand painting this or something, you probably would want to spend that little bit of extra information to get a cleaner unwrap like I've just shown you. But for our specific goal, this is going to be perfect. So we're going to do exactly the same thing for the next ring um, so we'll just do this um, again actually I'll put this on in the background and speed it up because it's the same again we're just going to do the edge loop in the middle and then one down here to ease that up a little bit and that's going to be the same for the last two as well in fact it is going to be a little bit different for the final one because it's only half a loop I forgot about that uh, I just need to double check a few things on this one. So we don't have a face down here, which means I don't think we can unwrap this. So for this one, I think what we want to do is, I think because we don't have faces down here, um, it's only half an object. I think if we do just one cut around here, this is actually gonna give us some weird results. Yeah, so that's not ideal. So I think we're gonna need to do one across the middle as well. There we go, okay, so that's looking a bit better. I'll just double check what the other option is to do it across the top, because this isn't gonna be very visible either way. And we can also see what happens if we clear the initial seam. Uh, so this is a bit of a weird object to work with. So sometimes you do just need to see what happens with different cuts. In fact, I'm gonna clear all of the seams and maybe we can get away with just one underneath. So Alt Shift select those. Yeah, I think that's gonna be perfectly fine. Just one hidden underneath. It's taking up about the same amount of space as the other ones looks pretty much the same that way. And that, yeah, that's going to be perfectly fine. Okay, so that is those cut into place. So they were the easy bits. We're now going to move on to our lamp. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to make a scene around all of the windows here. So I'll mark a seam on all of the edges on the inside faces here because this is going to be our divide for the other material. This is actually going to make selecting those very simple. And this is going to be a completely separate material anyway. Oh, and I think I missed that face. An easier option would have just been to select all of those faces. So if you went into face mode, selected all of those, and then return to edge mode, you actually would have had all of the edges that you wanted just there. Uh, and then you could just cut those and mark the seams. 
I selected the wrong thing there, so I'm going to mark that seam and clear that seam. And then the first step is that we're just going to go into object mode, select the lamp, give this a new uh, material. We'll give this the texture material. And the reason I'm doing this now is that we can then select all of the rings, select the lamp last, and again, we'll do our control L, and then we'll uh, make links by the materials so that they will share the same material. It's gonna look a little bit weird for now, but that's fine. And then make sure you do that first because the next step is we're gonna go into our lamp in edit mode. We're gonna select the faces one last time and get these. And we're gonna give this a new uh, material layer and we're gonna assign this one either a new material if you don't have another one. Or for me, I've got the option of this second wood material. So I'm gonna select that one. And I'm just gonna change this very quickly to be a yellow just for kind of visual aesthetic and make sure that we assign this to the faces that we have selected. And we can even give this a little bit of an, of, uh, an emission because that is gonna be how this looks in the engines. Okay, so that is the inner lit faces kind of dealt with, which means we can now go back and focus on the rest of the lamp, which is uh, still looking a little bit jagged there in the unwrap. So the first thing is we're probably gonna to wanna to get this face, go back into edge mode and mark these seams. So again, a nice out of the way seam that we can add here. Uh, we know that we're gonna pretty much need this to be in two halves so we can uh, select one of the edges at the bottom and then control select the edge at the top and we'll mark that seam, Look, see how that looks. It's looking a little bit better. And then we also wanted to probably get this edge loop just inside. So in face mode, first of all, I'm going to grab that face so we get all of those edges and then shift select the final edge there, control E, mark seam. I'm gonna see that's starting to look a little bit better. And we can probably just do actually the same thing on the other side. So if we find the exact other side, where was that? We will get that edge in here and then control select down to this one and then we'll mark that seam. And we can see this is all being relaxed a little bit easier now. So the one issue that we're getting is we probably just want some seams around here to allow this to be cut open. And I think it might be a little bit easier to actually work in the UV editing side here. So the UV map here, uh, rather than keep spinning around the model. So the main issues, areas of contention we can see are gonna be, so I'm just going to shift alt select to get all of these edges here, um, making sure we don't get those going through the middle and then mark that seam to allow that to open up. So we're getting a much better unwrap here. And here that's perfect apart from the inside and we'll fix that last. And then do the same thing on this side uh, to get all of these. So that's much, much better. The only way that we can really relax these is to get all of these and maybe mark the seam there. Um, and maybe we have to separate it around here as well. So I'm Alt Shift selecting around the outside there separating those so yeah the only way that we if you want this to be avoiding the stretching there you're actually going to need to separate them into their individual blocks because we've got such an interesting shape going on yeah they need to be their own separate islands so if we were to just go if i alt shift select and just go around the outside here and mark that seam i think what's going to happen is because we've separated that to leave the glass section uh, that will just be its own island, but I think it's still going to be a weird shape and green. So we'll mark that seam and test it. So yeah, we're going to get this green island over here, uh, which means we want to also come in and separate these off so that it can relax itself. So I just had to get the door and I forgot where I was, but I think, so we're looking at this unwrap over here. So we've separated the site. What did we do with the other one? Okay, so yeah, <laughs> we've got our section here. I just realized as well, actually, we probably don't need this to have quite so many cuts. What we can do with this one, is it's in its own little island, its own little weird uh, stretched shape. If we just select one of these edges, press Control and E, mark seam, uh, rather than having all of these split into separate ones like we've got here, this will give us just one nice long uh, unstretched line. So if we find this, uh, I want to get this whole bit here. Just remember where it was. And we can probably clear all of these seams and tidy that up a little bit more so we get uh, a lot less information there. So I'm just gonna select all of these, press Control and E, clear seam, get that back into its little broken state. We're gonna go around the outside and then just pick one of these, press Shift to select that, press Control and E, and mark that seam. Uh, and make sure that we also do the inside as well because I cleared all of that entirely. So do the inside one, uh, edge loop, mark seam, and we'll now get a second straight line over here. So that is gonna be a much better approach. So if we just do the same here, Alt and Shift select, select that one, and I'm gonna Alt, Shift select, and then select that one, press Control and E, mark seam, we can do all of those at once. And we now have four nice straight lines with no stretching. So this is actually looking really tidy for quite a complex shape. 
So with all of that done, we know that we don't really need to worry about the UV mapping on these very much. It's not going to be UV mapped as such. So I'm going to grab the these shapes here and just in face mode, select these and move them off of the texture for a moment. I think that's going to be the bottom. That's going to be the top. And then really what we want to do is get all of this into our metallic color. So we can box select all of these, make this much smaller, bring that in here. And I think that's the color I went for. Although I think I may have had a copper color for the lamp in the final render, but this will be perfectly fine. Again, we're going to need to match this against the other UV islands. So we're actually going to make this a lot smaller uh, because this is sharing space with the post metal and the nails. I know the nails are down here, so I'll move this over here actually, or maybe up here. Move this to the top right because I don't think there's very much over there in the other models. And I'm going to kind of just cheat with these. Uh, I'm going to put these really small in the bottom right hand corner. If we do ever do anything, then they're available, but we don't really need these to be textured. It's not actually showing part of this texture anyway, so we'll just move that off. This is going to be getting its data from another material. Uh, and then we can go back to the rings. So at this stage, actually, I think I'm going to select everything, press Control and J to join these together because we have all of our UV mapping done. We can go into edit mode. I'm going to press U again, actually, to allow it to automate and uh, set the average for the islands and then just redo those steps. So in face mode, I'll select all of these, move these off, and then pretty much everything else needs to be in that metal space. So we can uh, press B to box select, drag these down in size, make sure they're using the correct material and that we have the image selected over here. I'm not sure why my image is just selected. If that happens to you, then just go back to open, find where you've saved your texture and open that there. So just needed to reopen my texture from the desktop. Box select these just to move these into the metal space. Again, I'll make that much smaller because I know we're going to need to adjust that in a moment. And we'll keep these off to the bottom somewhere. Okay, so back in object mode, I'm just going to re-enable the lamp post here and the fence so that I can get all of these in edit mode. So select everything, shift select all of the objects. Uh, but before we put all of these objects together, I'm just going to combine these as well. So control J. So this is one whole post object now. So I'm just going to rename this one to SM underscore post. And then in object mode, make sure we grab both of these, go into edit mode, select everything, and we'll just make sure that there's no overlapping UVs. And we, we do have that issue here. So uh, it's only the metal, I think, which is going to be a problem. So I'm just going to select this bit and this bit in the background with L because that's going to be easier to move than all of these small lamp sections. Just make sure that they're not overlapping. And we're kind of getting this into a neat island arrangement now. So nothing there that I can see is overlapping. We've got all of that sorted. Uh, the rock section has its own area. This is going to be its own area. So that is all looking pretty good. If we just quickly go into render mode as well, uh, you can't see much because I haven't got the light set up, but we can see we've got our emissive color. So that's going to look quite cool in the engine. All of this has now got the materials applied that we wanted. So that is our lamp post, good and ready to go, which leaves the buckets, which is, <laughs> we can see we've got a lot of different components here. So this is going to be nice and fun to go through in the next topic. So I'll leave that here for today though. As always, if you enjoy the videos or find them useful, please do leave a like and share the video around. That always helps and is greatly appreciated. And of course, if you wanted to be kept up to date with any of the content coming from any of the playlists on the channel, do consider subscribing and making sure you hit the notification bell to get all of those updates. As ever though, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.